Former Springbok wing Jock Willifeed is my guest today. Jock, welcome to Front Row Rugby. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Just before we begin the conversation, let's take a look at the trivia question for today. In 2008, Peter de Villiers became Springbok coach. Who was his first test match against? Well, if you know the answer to that, you can put it in the comment section down below. We'll also find out if Jock knows the answer, but we'll do that at the end of our conversation. Jock, let's get started in 1992. What did it feel like for you when you were first called up to that Springbok squad? Well, obviously happy, surprised. Um, yes, I don't know. It's a lot of mixed feelings. I was still in varsity, so... Uh, yeah, well, it was quite a big, well, honour, I suppose. And it was just, it was incredible. I mean, it's something obviously you work for and uh, you got selected. I think I was the second last guy that is, uh, the, my name was uh, announced second last. So when it happened, yes, obviously it was a very, very, very happy and a big party. And how special was it for you to be on the winning side? Because it's not always the case that you win on your debut. No, no, obviously not. Um, it's something different. If you're playing for Springboks, it's, it's a, obviously it's a different level. And um, everybody on, on the pitch is, is excellent. So, uh, yes, and you, it's, it's a, quite a big honour. And it's, you get stage fright, I suppose, the first couple of times. And, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's just, it's big. It's enormous. And in a blink of, blink of eye, uh, the whole match is, is gone. It's over. You still walk into the dressing room, the match is over, and you realize, okay, you've won or you've lost or whatever. And within the team setup, especially if you're on tour, the mood, uh, if you're winning, the mood is very nice and the tour is nice. Although that first tour wasn't the nicest tour we had. But um, uh, if you're on losing, losing side, everything becomes a bugger up. From the accommodation to the practices and everything. So obviously winning, winning is everything. And those days we didn't have all these phones and stuff. And we used to get all the faxes through to the... To, uh, through, the, to, through the hotel and there were piles and piles of faxes coming through every week. So it's quite, quite nice and you know you've got the support of the country and we didn't have Springbok rugby for a long time. So everybody was watching you know, it was a, it was quite a big thing. I mean, and as a youngster, it's a, it's a big stage. Every, everything is full and uh, oh, it's, it's, it's incredible. It's incredible. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, why not hit the like button? I had Ian MacDonald on the show a couple of episodes ago and he told me that one of the problems that he found was that because most of the players were new to international rugby and a lot of the guys were making their debuts, you didn't really have a lot of experienced guys. I mean, there was Nas, there was, there was Donny Gerber, Val Bartman, but most of the guys had never really played international rugby before and it made it difficult because there was not really anybody to talk to, nobody to really get advice from. How did you experience that? No, it was an eye-opener. Uh, I think... Uh... I think we thought that we were good. We thought we played good rugby and it was provincial rugby. And we started off there and we started off playing provincial sides. And these guys were incredibly good. And the pace of the game was it's something, it was a different level. And obviously in a rugby team, like you say, you you got to have young guys, you got to have guys with an experience. We had, we had uh, experience uh, on, a, on, a, on a carry cup side. And that's it. And the Carry Cup those days were, I think, eight to ten matches a year. And now you're playing on a, on a tour. You're playing every Wednesday and you're playing every Saturday. So it continues. Uh, so, and the, and, the, and the, the, the level of the rugby was something we didn't know. So, um, yeah, there was a lot of fighting we, didn't, we, we weren't used to. Uh, there was, yeah, it was a big eye-opener. And... Luckily, we adjusted quickly, but it was still, I mean, it was hectic. It was hectic. And um, especially in a, in a rugby game, if your experienced guys, um, they can calm things down and they can change uh, uh, tactics in the game and everything. Yes, we had a nose, but within the tight forge, you need a captain, you need an, in the back row, you need a, uh, a captain and the back three. 
And so, yes, Mac is c completely, I, I totally agree with him. Although there were experienced guys in the in the Curry Cup, I mean, we had a Tian Strauss there, we had Ian McDonald's, we had a lot of good players coming from Transvaal. Uh, we get, uh, we had Donny, uh, although Donny is not talkative. Um, but, but yes, I totally agree with him, totally. I've also had guys like Nas Boerter on the show, Adrian Richter, Vili Hills. Uh, in fact, Vili told me that that 1992 Tour de France was difficult because you guys were labelled by the press as rude Afrikaners. And obviously, Adrian and Nas also commented on how tough that tour was. How difficult was it, Jock? Well, I think that was that was my most that, that was the toughest tour I've ever been on. Um, I think um, we were novices on, on touring. And, and it was very difficult. Uh, it felt like, for me, it felt like uh, we're playing a match maybe on a Wednesday. But the Saturday match wasn't uh, very close. So we used to have all these six, eight-hour bus rides uh, to, the next, to the next match. It felt like we're going north and south and north and south the whole tour. So we had these, these long bus rides. And our coach those days are John Williams. When as soon as we arrived at, at the hotel, he said, "Okay, within ten or fifteen minutes, we're going to practice." And uh, we didn't stay in five-star hotels like like Nelson and said. So you had to carry, you had to get everything, carry them up to your room, get the kit quickly as possible, get back to the bus, which was a rush. And I think uh, from an admin side as well, uh, we were very inexperienced. Um, and the and the uh, we used to play, like say on an eight o'clock in the evening we have dinner. In France it doesn't work that way. You get you're lucky if you get your food at eleven or twelve o'clock. They're not bothered. So or the um, uh, it, the receptions after a match they only start at twelve one o'clock at uh, at night and they keep you there and we were, we weren't used to it. Um, so yes, it was a tough tour. It was, it was uh, from an admin side. I think it was a tough tour. It was tough on the players, uh, especially for me. The the conditions we weren't used to the cold and the wet and the, um, yeah. So we, well, well you, you you need to carry on. I mean, every now and again you make a phone call back home. And uh, everybody, everybody thought it's very glamorous, but it's not that glamorous if you're there. I can promise you that. Let's move on to 1993 now. Ian McIntosh has become the new Springbok coach. And one of the first assignments was a difficult tour to Australia, who were the world champions at the time. But we beat the Wallabies in that first test match in Sydney. What was the atmosphere like afterwards? You can just imagine. I mean, they were brilliant. Uh, you had... Jason Little, Timmy Oren, uh, Campo, uh, Johnny Eels, they were absolutely brilliant. I was knackered after that match. It was, it was an incredible match. It was a quick match, and they were trying to catch up, and they were running everything. Uh, they were very dangerous players, very good players. Um, yeah, it was... Yeah. Aussie, Aussie is different. Aussie is different. And the Aussies are very, very skillful players. It's a different, well, what I thought, in, 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 in Europe, the people tend to run lines. They run into gaps because of the wet weather. Aussie is very similar to us. They've got skills and they've got feet because the pitches are more, more likely to ours. So, um, I mean, David Campisi is a brilliant player. He's a legend. To keep him uh, to keep him away is, is something else, and I used to play against him. Just to, to walking onto a pitch with the same guy as him is just incredible. Uh, but the atmosphere afterwards, you can just imagine that was it was brilliant. I thought after the uh, at some stage I looked at the stands, and uh, uh, there was a lot of South Africans there with a big banner. Yeah, no, I'm not going to tell you what was on the banner, <laughs> but it was good. <laughs> okay, we'll keep that as a secret. Uh, I had Peter Miller on the show as well, and he told me that uh, touring Argentina was the very best experience. And uh, he specifically mentioned the lacquer meat and the pretty girls. Would you go along with that? 
Yes, definitely. Well, no, I love I love Argentina. I think it's the best place. Uh, well, it's one of the best places I've ever been to. Uh, because of the food, yes, the golds are very pretty. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, it's uh, Argentina is something different. It's a very relaxed uh, atmosphere. Um, uh, we had a we had a hard, tough match in Tucumán. It was more of a boxing fight than it was a rugby match. But Argentina was nice. Yeah, I love. I've, I've, I've been to Argentina uh, many times. I love the place. Apart from South Africa, that's my favorite country. And then you only played for the Springboks again after the 1995 Rugby World Cup. What happened? Yeah, I had a knee operation, so I missed the 94 tour to New Zealand. Uh, and then I was in the squad for the World Cup, and I tore my hamstring just before the World Cup. So I only recovered uh, when the tournament was busy. So, yes, I only started when the tournament was finished. Unfortunately, I missed that. So obviously, when you played for the box in 92, 93, it was still the amateur era. And then you came back in 95. We were now the world champions and rugby had just turned professional. Was there any much of a difference that you noticed in the Springbok camp? Uh, I don't think there was much difference. Uh, we had we had low, well, I, had, I think I had five coaches. I can't remember. Every, every coach has got a, a different style. Kitsch was something that we were used to at the Bulls, which is a lot of discipline. And um, uh, whilst Mac is very more relaxed, uh, uh, they're all brilliant coaches. But uh, I don't think that first two, three years, it made a big difference, the money. It wasn't a vast amount of money anyway. So it was just, you could find, uh, pay your phone bills or what, whatever. And then you went on that end of year tour in 1996 under Andre Markroff, who of course had dropped Francois Pinot, one of the bombshell decisions uh, probably in the history of Springbok rugby. What would you say was the atmosphere like in the Bok camp at that moment? I don't know. I, th I think uh, Gary came in. Uh, Gary is a brilliant bloke. Francois was a good captain. Uh, uh, rugby has got that thing. People come and go. I mean, it's, 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 so you got to adapt to that as well. I think um, Gary did very well. Uh, he brought something different to the team. Francois was very... Uh, uh, Gary didn't speak as much as, as Francois. Francois was a very motivational guy. I think Gary led more from, from his actions than from his words. He's more a quiet type of guy. Um, and no, nah, nah, I'll, I'll, I'll love them all, all of them. So it doesn't make any difference to me as long as I yeah. play. And how special was it to beat France in France? It's always special to beat the French because um, I remember there was an article uh, in the newspaper one Sunday morning when after the match I read uh, there was an English newspaper in a hotel and they said, um, uh, Something like uh, the, the 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 France backline is, is is so gelled. It's like a symphony orchestra. But the problem was the symphony orchestra went to a rock concert, and they walked into Joppy Muller and <laughs> I think it was Peter or something. Um, and Henry Anibal was a fly, and they got just got smashed both those days. And that Wales test that ended the tour also turned out to be your final test match for the Springboks. How disappointing was it for you that it all came to an end there? Oh, well, that's life. I had a knee operation after that. Um, and I, unfortunately, I just never recovered enough uh, to make the team anymore. But it was a good couple of four or five years, I can't remember. Uh, it was a nice tour. We actually, uh, 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 Andre Markov made a deal with us. When we won the French, he said, okay, you've got off. So we actually didn't practice, practice that week before the Welsh test. He gave us off. And on the Thursday, we got together. He said, listen, guys, you've got to keep going. We've still got a test on Saturday. You're going wild. Get relaxed. Just, just focus. we still got a test to play. And... Uh, there was a, there was a, uh, as we were singing the, the national anthems, there was a guy with a banner 
uh, from Wales, uh, got in onto a pitch with a big uh, board that said Trump use uh, racist killer. And we were very relaxed going towards the test match. Everybody was laughing and chatting. And as soon as that guy came onto the pitch, obviously you didn't see it on telly. It was like a trip switch you switch on. And when we got together, nobody said nothing. Gary said, okay, you know what to do. And every, everybody was just switched on. And from that single moment, and I think we won that test. Uh, I think it was a big score. I can't remember. Was that Henry Trump? Yeah. Listen, Henry had uh, something in his past. Uh, I'm not sure what it was. Uh, and that was actually directed exactly like him. It, it was like a protest, a protest or something that uh, came up. And, and that was, well, Henry, that was his only tour. You uh, came with us. And Henry's a brilliant oak. And that was just a, a, a little spark or a smoke. It was an instant in that before that match, um, which sparked the whole team. Okay, Jock, who was your toughest opponent? My toughest? Well, that's easy. There was a bloke from New Zealand, John Kerwin. Uh, he was about six foot four, I think, and he was extremely quick and extremely strong um, and a, a brilliant bloke, brilliant bloke. But um, yes, he was, he, was, he was a brilliant player, brilliant. I know that some of these are not for public consumption, but I have to ask you, is there a funny moment from the Springboks that you can share with us from your time there? Oh, there were lots, lots. <laughs> You're a bit quick on me, but um, we, had, we actually, I played, um, we, I played against John, uh, John Kerwin. I thought to myself, okay, this guy is so quick, and if, if I give him a meter or two, um, he's going to beat me every single time. All right, so i got to be on to him as soon as he gets the ball on. And as I tackled him, I hit him. And as I hit him, I said to him, okay, welcome to Pretoria, or welcome to Loftus, or welcome to whatever. At one stage in the second half, he got, he got a ball, and he had about two or three meters on me, and he ran around me. And as I turned around, Chasing Adrian Richter just got all of him on his on, on his trousers, and I tackled him out on the on, on the corner flag, and uh, uh, he picked me up. He picked me up from the ground. He said to me, "Mr. Willifield, stop fighting and start playing rugby. You're a much better pro- rugby player." <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they were funny, very odd. But the New Zealand's are very odd. Uh, but nice guys, nice guys. And what are you up to these days? Well, I'm I'm, in, I'm into construction. I've been in the construction for 20, 20, 20 22 years. Uh, I'm I'm laying low. I'm semi-retired now, so I come to work for a month and I uh, go and relax for a month. Um, yeah, I'm I'm I've, I'm I think I've worked enough in my life, so I'm. I'm just taking it very, very slowly. Okay, let's have a look at that trivia question again then from earlier. In 2008, Peter de Villiers became Springbok coach. Who was his first test match against? Do you know the answer, Jock? I'll I'll tell you now, I can't remember. (laughs) Okay, the answer is Wales. Jock, let me say thank you very, very much for being on Front Row Rugby today. It was lovely having you on as a guest. And I hope we can have you on again in the future. No problem. Thanks a lot, eh? Last time on Front Row Rugby, I had 1995 Rugby World Cup winner Robbie Brink on the show. You can go and have a look at that video. It's appearing on the screen right now. Next time, I will have 2004 Tri-Nations winner Devet Barry here. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed that video, why not spear tackle the like button? You can also subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any content from Front Row Rugby. See you next time.